This video will be everything you need to know to turn your gameplay clips from uh, Twitch or YouTube live streams into YouTube Shorts content. I'm going to try to keep things as approachable as possible, so hopefully if you are a complete beginner, you should be able to follow along just fine. Great, here I am in DaVinci Resolve and I am on the edit page. You have this row of icons down here. These are the different pages inside DaVinci Resolve. And if you load up Resolve for the first time, uh, it might kick you to the media page or this cut page. The only thing you really need to know about the cut page is that in my opinion, it is a specialized tool. And it's not the place I would recommend beginners begin. The edit page is your more default editing workspace. So that is where we are going to start working. So I'm here in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve and you see I have a completely clear workspace, nothing on my timeline, I don't even have a timeline and nothing in my media pool. But I'm going to start uh, by dragging in one clip into that media pool and I will instantly get this pop up. Especially if you're new to Resolve, don't worry, you'll probably see this pop up all the time. If you start a project by dragging in video clips, Resolve is going to look at that video clip and look at the frame rate of that clip. And if there is a mismatch between that clip and your default project settings, you will get this prompt. The odds are pretty good. You want to match the frame rate of your clips. You can always click change, but frame rate is something you'll want to keep in mind, especially when you create timelines, which we're about to do. I will click change for now. And while we could drag this clip right down here to create a timeline, I am going to create one by right clicking in our media pool and going to timeline, create new timeline. That'll give us this prompt. I'll name this something like YouTube short and I'm going to uncheck used project setting. I have other videos that dive into project settings a little bit more, including our creating project settings presets, but it's generally a good habit to not just keep this in mind, but go through the process when you're creating a new project or creating new timelines. So here we have those same options under general, but I'm going to come over to format. I see my default settings are 4K60. I'm actually gonna type in here uh, 1080 by 1920 and set a frame rate to 30. You'll see that creates this vertical timeline here. We could have left our frame rate at 60, which is what our source clip was recorded in, but I bumped that down to 30, and since the clip is 60, that shouldn't be an issue. With all of that out of the way, I am set to drag my clip right onto my timeline, and the only other setting I've really tweaked in preparation is I have come over here to this small audio controls panel over here, and I've just clicked this button to mute so that while we are scrubbing through our clip, we don't hear any of the gameplay audio. And this clip itself, if I zoom in, just just a little bit. Uh, this is a gameplay clip I have mocked up. This is some uh, Halo gameplay I recorded, but the sort of camera down in the corner I pulled from a stock footage site. But this would be about what you were working with in 90% of streaming situations. Now the look we're going for is a very standard sort of TikTok YouTube short gameplay clip layout. We're going to have a back layer that is scaled up and darkened a little bit and blurry. We're gonna have our main gameplay in the center, zoomed just a little bit to drive the viewer attention. And on top of all of that, we are going to have our webcam down in the corner uh, repositioned up towards the top so you see any uh, facial reactions as well. So to do that, I'm going to start by creating three copies of just this video layer. Also good to be aware of is this button right here to link clips. I have this unchecked right now. If it was on, then these clips would move together, but I want it off because I'm just messing with the video layer. I'm going to click and hold on that clip, hold alt, and then just drag my mouse up and you'll see that creates a duplicate clip and drags that to the second video layer. I'm gonna give us a little more room to work here and repeat that process one more time. I repositioned a little bit just so we don't have quite such a dark scene. Now I'm gonna start working on this bottom most layer and I'm going to come up to my inspector over here. Um, and here you see all the default transform options for your clip. The first one is zoom and that's what we want. So I'm just gonna scale that up until the image fits the entire screen. Great. Now, because this is the back layer and it is on that default black background, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I'm gonna bring down the opacity to functionally darken this clip. Just a bit, that should be good. And on this layer, I'm gonna make sure my effects library is open over here. Come down to open effects and here we have a whole bunch of blurs. I'm just gonna grab a Gaussian blur, drop that on that clip. And in that same inspector, we had all those transform options under this video tab. But now that we have applied an effect to that, we can jump over to the effects tab. And here you have controls for that blur. It already did a little bit. I'll pull it up just a little bit more. And there you can see it just adds sort of texture back there. You aren't really looking in the background for information, but especially as we scroll, that'll follow along and that'll really tie the scene together. Now to reposition our middle clip, I'm actually going to select this top layer. And there are a few things you could do here. You could either click D to disable the individual clip, 
or you could come over to this icon here to disable the video track. We're just working on this in order. So we wanna look at that middle clip and all I'm gonna do here, this is our main focus gameplay clip. I'm just gonna scale that up. Um, for this example, I'm gonna do that right until the webcam goes out of frame. Especially in shooters, you know your action will be uh, in the middle where your crosshair is. So this should be great. That's about what I would want. Then I can toggle back on that top video clip. You will see it looks a little bit funky now because we have that zoomed in clip and then our whole clip. So to clean that up, uh, let's go back to that middle clip and just disable that for now. We've already looked at the transform controls inside the inspector. But for this, we are going to use a different set of controls um, that a lot of beginners miss, but they're super powerful. We have our main viewer here and down in the bottom left hand corner, we have this little drop down menu that has a whole bunch of options. And you'll see that by default it is on transform, but it is grayed out. If we click that on, then we will have this box comes up that gives us these tactile controls for that same transform information. I can just drag this, move it around. I can scale up or down. I can grab this bar to rotate it around and then I can undo all of that because I, I don't want that. This is super useful, it's super fast. So I can start to sort of drag this towards the top, but I don't want transform first, I wanna come down to crop. And you'll see that gets rid of that center bar, but now if we grab these edges and bring them in, you'll see it is actually cropping that image. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Uh, I'm zooming in in this workspace by holding middle mouse button and left mouse button. And I'm just gonna bring these edges down so we are completely isolating that sort of webcam area. That looks great. And then if I go back to transform, you'll see now we have this floating bar over here and that's where the center of the image used to be. But if you grab this dot here, you are actually going to be moving the anchor point of this clip. So I can move this back towards the center of this new clip so that like if we scale, it'll scale from center correctly. So I'll zoom out a bit more and then we can reposition this, zoom this up a bit more nice and chunky so it gets all that attention. And then when we toggle back on that middle clip, we have a pretty nice looking clip. You can uh, rearrange these however you want, scale, zoom. You can come to that middle clip and now these transforming controls are on. You can move this uh, down or back and forth, whatever you want. And hey, you've just edited a gameplay clip for YouTube Shorts. From here, the only real thing left to do would be to add any uh, text animation or additional effects. And then you could come over to this little rocket ship in this bar down here, and this is the deliver page. By default, you should be on this custom preset out here uh, where you can name it, give it a location, and make sure all the correct settings for your render are good to go, including importantly, the resolution and frame rate. If this is just a little overwhelming, uh, you can always click over to YouTube. Just make sure this resolution is set from 1920 by 1080, which would be like your standard horizontal layout. Click that over to custom and you might need to toggle back to your timeline, but that should update to 1080 by 1920. So you will get a video that is uh, completely ready to upload. Resolve does have this option to upload directly to YouTube. I haven't messed with that for YouTube shorts. So I probably wouldn't recommend that. Now for YouTube shorts or TikTok or anything else, uh, while things have been getting better, a lot of them still require upload from a mobile device or maybe I'm not currently up to date, but my workflow from here, once I have a final exported video, I'll toss that in Google Drive or somewhere else, send that to my phone and make sure I can upload it directly how I want it. Especially right now for YouTube Shorts, where you can upload YouTube Shorts from a desktop, uh, but you need to make sure it is uh, tagged correctly and all the other things are correct. Whereas in the app, you can choose upload as a YouTube Short and then YouTube knows right off the bat, that's what it's dealing with. All right, we are about to move on to the very exciting world of presets and templates in DaVinci Resolve. But first, I wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Artlist. Artlist provides music and sound effects to creators just like you. And while they have an unlimited license that covers everything from Twitter clips to commercials on TV, they also recently rolled out the personal license, which is perfect for content creators. Unlimited music and sound effects updated daily so you can find the perfect audio for your videos. You can have your music playlist for while you're streaming, but then you can also find individual clips for your VOD content to make sure you nail the exact tone and style you're going for. And then you have their entire sound effects library to spice up your animations or effects on top of it all. So head over to artlist.io to learn more and find out which plan is right for you. And when you sign up using the link in the description of this video, you will also get two free months added to your subscription. Thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video. All right. Time to have some fun, because we are talking about presets and templates. Presets and templates in DaVinci Resolve are very, very powerful. 
I talk about them all the time. Most of my channel is built on them. I have given away a ton of free presets and templates, but right now we are talking about YouTube Shorts. And the good news is that presets can make your life editing YouTube Shorts much easier. I'm gonna show off real quick and demonstrate a preset that I have made and given away to all of you. And then I'm just going to uh, lightly touch on uh, how it's possible for you to create your own templates. All right, we're back in Resolve. We have this gameplay clip we have edited, but watch this. I'm gonna drag a new copy of that clip to the timeline. It is shrunk down. You see the original clip, that's great. But I'm going to come down to effects, open up Sterling Supply Company, that's my company. These are some of the free effects I've given away and I'm gonna scroll down until I see SSC TikTok. And yes, uh, this effect is and will stay named TikTok. You can use it for YouTube Shorts, you can use it for Instagram Reels, you can use it just for fun. It's just called TikTok. But watch this, when I grab that effect and drag it onto my clip, some stuff instantly starts happening. You see that background layer uh, is scaled up and blurred. We have that middle layer blurred as well. But this top layer, our gameplay clip, um, is a little off. It's zooming into this area below the camera. This preset is made to work with practically uh, any Twitch clip or gameplay recording. And because of that, you will have to tune it a little bit when you drag it onto your effect. But as you can see, uh, we already got 80, 90% of the way there. You customize this effect uh, like the effects we looked at earlier by just making sure your clip is selected. And then in the inspector, you can hop over to the effects tab. And here you have a whole bunch of controls. The first one is the most important, this move to the camera. I'm gonna scale in a little bit. And if we move this around, you will see we just need to sort of slide our background footage into place so that this camera is in the middle of the box. And then you can adjust individually the sort of uh, mat mask width and height change the camera position, scale it back up. And you even have this extra setting to round this out. So you can make it a bubble or rounded edges. I like that a lot. And then you have just a little bit more controls for this uh, central gameplay. You can change where this is. You can change the scale of that as well. And hey, what we did uh, pretty quickly on the edit page, um, we've now done even more quickly using a free preset. Like I said, I've shown this off a few times in different videos before. It never gets old. It's a drag and drop preset that I know can save people so much time. But I know you're asking, how can I save more time? Well, once you change these settings, if you were to bring in a uh, new copy of this clip and grab that same effect, um, it would default to these default settings. You would have to uh, come in and change these uh, controls each time. One option for saving these controls would be to create an adjustment clip, but we're gonna do something a little different. I'm going to come to this first clip that we have customized, select that, and I'm gonna click this icon over here uh, to load that effect into the Fusion page. Now the Fusion page is intimidating. I'm gonna zoom into our little node tree here again by clicking middle and left mouse button. And you'll see this sort of yellow stack of nodes here. That's called TikTok because that was a preset. If we double click that, you will see all the nodes uh, that form this effect. But mercifully, we don't need to deal with that. I can shrink that back down. If we look over here, you might need to open your inspector. You see those same set of controls. But now we can right click on this title and go to settings, save as. That'll take you to this default location for saving these settings. And you could just name this. YouTube short one, click save. And now if I go back to my timeline, come to the second clip, which remember uh, we, we drag this in, apply the effect so it has all the default effect settings. I can load that up into Fusion, select that node stack. You can right click on that title, go to settings load, and then we can click that YouTube short one, click open. It will reposition all of those controls. And when we go back to our edit page, hey, our clip is edited. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but wait, there's more. As you saw, this preset is just a bunch of nodes inside the Fusion page uh, telling it to duplicate these layers, move them around, blur the background, things like that. I just made it general enough and gave the user uh, the controls to customize it on the edit page. But you can absolutely make your own preset. Customize exactly the way you want it for your layout, any additional effects, those rounded corners. You can have as many uh, duplicates of your footage as you want. If you want your camera and then like your KDA or ammo or anything underneath that, you can set that up. And then you can save that as a preset that shows up on the edit page so that when you bring in your clips, all you have to do is drag and drop your custom preset onto your effect and your editing is done. Outside of, of course, any additional texture effects. 
Now, as you might imagine, that is a little bit more complicated than what we've talked about so far. So that won't be in this video, but good news, I already made that video. Link to that will obviously be in the description. So obviously if you want to check that out or if you're just interested in uh, Resolve tutorials or any of my other free presets, click around the channel, you might find something you like. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.